Hello everyone, and welcome to another long overdue Kerbal Space Program episode. This is Mitch, and yeah, um, real life has been holding me back a little bit, motivation, that kind of stuff. Um, I've moved as well, I had a summer course, I had a contract, I have work every weekend. So yeah, but better late than never, this video is coming now. And I've even gone ahead and made a DIY pop filter for my microphone, so there's probably going to be a little less popping in this video until at least I can buy a real one. So uh, insert a little picture here, it looks absolutely horrible, cute horrified noises and screams, but it works as far as I can tell. So, without further ado, uh, if you've read the title, or if you've gotten my clue from the last video, today we are going to Elu. Yes, the furthest planet from the center of the system, and I guess the furthest planet from Kerbin as well. Um, we are going there because I feel it's actually easier than some of the other choices we have left. Uh, I want to make something big for Jules, something big for Duna, then there will be Moho left as well. And yeah, we're going to Ilu. Now, Ilu is pretty far away. And so, let's watch, because I've actually already prepared a rocket, so I'm going to go right ahead and explain it to you how I've built it. It's probably a little over-engineered, but it's better than being under-engineered and having bad surprises. So first of all, going to Ilu, what's it going to require? Well, I've actually already uh, time warped to a launch window. So we are going from Kerbin and we want to go to Ilu. Plot it. It's going to require 4,000 meters per second of Delta V just to get there, basically. Um, 2,600 of which uh, at launch, so I wanted a vehicle that had some oomph to it, meaning not nuclear engines, because nuclear engines are very efficient, but they very much lack the oomph required to make a very efficient maneuver of this magnitude, at least if you're impatient like me. So that's it, and then coming back from ELU, is a not so insignificant amount of fuel as well. Ideally, if you want to break before re-entering the um, Kerbin atmosphere, it would take 3,400, well, almost 3,500 meters per second of delta V, which is quite a lot. Now, if we skip that part, it's only about, well, 1,300 uh, meters per second um, of delta V, but uh, that 2,000 meters difference per second is pretty much the extra speed we'd be entering the atmosphere at. So that would be pretty significant, so I don't want to risk it too much. I'm probably not going to break perfectly into an orbit and then drop down, but We'll have enough braking fuel. So without further ado, let's watch the rocket. Let's take a good look at it. So the MEV, uh, as you can see, it's by far the most expensive rocket I've built so far, at least a single rocket. The Duna mission uh, was more valuable in total uh, than this single one, but it's actually, I think it's somewhere close to 70% of the value of the entire Duna mission, which still has a space station around Duna. This doesn't. So it's the manned ELU exploration vehicle, Mark 1. And it's got a lot of delta V. And it's got a lot of thrust to weight ratios as well. Um, never really dipping below uh, 0 0.5 Gs. So pretty significant. Now, most important thing is the payload. And the payload is actually this tiny lander. That's right, this huge rocket is used strictly for this tiny lander. It's a single seat. It does not have a probe core because 
to use a probe core, I would need to get signal out to Yilu. And getting signal out to Yilu uh, would be kind of difficult. Uh, one of the reasons for that is simply that there isn't much sun all the way out um, around Yilu, which means that solar panels are actually pretty bad. So I've actually put two Gigantors on this thing even though it doesn't consume much electricity, just to make sure we can use liberal amounts of electricity uh, without being scared uh, for the low charge speed. So, there's that. And now the lander as well. It's a single seat. And I probably want to pilot in there, which means we are not going to be able to reset experiments that are usable only once. So I've only brought a single mystery goo, which is not resettable. Every other instrument uh, can be used multiple times. So our brave pilot is going to take this data multiple times, take it out, put it in a pod, rinse and repeat a bunch of times uh, to do science around ELU. Uh, the lander, we don't see the actual delta V here because I've actually disabled the fuel tanks because this thing is connected to a transfer stage via a docking port. And I don't want any of the fuel to flow into that stage before we have landed. So I've disabled that, but the total amount of delta V, this adds an extra almost 2000 delta V to this vehicle, which brings it to almost 14,000, 13, 14,000 delta V total in meters per second, which is huge, but Ilu is really far, so we need that fuel. And we have here uh, RCS thruster blocks because this is the lander, this is a transfer stage. We are actually going to do this Apollo style and undock the lander, land on ELU, launch back, and dock with the transfer stage again to return to Kerbin. So this is the core of the vehicle. So we have a barometer, thermometer, mystery goo, of course the command pod which in itself can get, um, sorry, crew reports. We have a gravioli detector and a seismic accelerator. So all good stuff. Um, we're not necessarily going there entirely for the science. We are going there uh, not even for a contract. I have actually absolutely no contracts selected at the moment because there just weren't any for ELU. So we're going to pay for this mission out of our own pocket. Uh, we're going to be getting world's first milestones. That's at least that. But we're basically doing this for bragging rights, I suppose, and putting a flag on the surface of Ilu and crossing it out as done. So, if we look again here, wait, this is Ilu to Kerbin, Kerbin to Ilu. Um, the pilot is gonna be there a while, almost uh, two years and a half. So we've actually packed, um, I guess, uh, a lot of uh, numerized books and uh, shows to catch up on for the poor pilot. Uh, I think there's only Jebediah who's crazy enough to go for such a lonely trip. But, you know, for glory, right? He's going to be there. He's going to be the Kerbonaut to go the furthest away from Kerbin and set foot on Ilu. He's going to be the only one as well. It'll probably be the guy who spent the most time in space as well, just because of the travel time um, included. Now, for the rest of the rocket, well, we have these Gigan tours, as I mentioned before. Hopefully, we don't decouple them too early. We should be fine, however, if we look at the staging here, we have these two bottom stages, which have huge liquid fuel boosters and a huge center stage here which should take us into orbit. And then we have this, I'm going to zoom out further, this middle stage, which is, should be anyway, enough to reach 
um, Ilu and park around it. This entire stage should do it. It's a little close, so maybe it won't, but hopefully it will. Um, as we said, well, we need an insert insertion burn. So if we look, it was, yeah, 4,000 meters per second of delta V. Oops. And we have total, in these two stages, we have a 1,400 or so meters per second and then 3,400. So we should be good, although there will be some inefficiencies because simply of the thrust to weight ratio. We're not going to be able to do the maneuver in a single burn, or at least not in a, at a single moment in time. It's going to be spread over time, and as such... It's going to be a little less efficient, kind of what like what happened um, for the Dre's mission. But probably not as, quite as bad, because I think I went to Dre's with a single uh, nuke. So yeah, there's that. Anyways, and then we have the bottom stage, this huge, huge bottom stage, which will carry us to orbit, hopefully. And that's about it for the rocket, so... Again, just a trivial matter of launching this into orbit. At least it should be trivial at this point in the series. So I'm going to go ahead and skip into orbit. And I'm going to show you the important maneuvers to get to Ilu. So be back in a moment. And I'm back. So I have tested things a little bit. Um, we are now in orbit. But this thing here, uh, I mean, agreeably has a lot of fuel left, but it's uh, grounds for spaghettification. It's gonna wobble if I use it very much and try to steer at the same time. So we're gonna be extra careful with that extra fuel and we're also gonna physics warp to orient the rocket into position because I've already made a maneuver node uh, I've made it off camera because it's very finicky, it's difficult to, um, it's basically threading a needle really. Uh, Hilu is not very big and as such getting an encounter is not the easiest thing to do. Uh, so I'm going to move this into position and show you the kind of situation we're looking at. Um, and I'm going to be a little cheaty and I'm going to use the uh, regular time warp to stop the rocket rotation. It's something you can do. I don't enjoy doing it very much, but it's certainly better than messing around with a very unwieldy rocket for a long time. So here we go, almost pointed in the right direction. And time warp. And that's going to stop the rotation of the rocket. Good. Uh, we might as well deploy the solar panels. There we go. And the maneuver node. So this is what it looks like. We need to go basically north a fair bit. And of course prograde a fair bit as well. And this basically gets us an encounter straight away with Ilu. Although we will be making a maneuver node to adjust our encounter uh, before we get there. To get a better encounter. Now, this maneuver, we're going to pause, actually. We have 2.5 kilometers per second of acceleration to do. And if you read here, there is 3 minutes in almost 45. That's uh, 1,400 meters per second. Then we have 8 minutes there for another 3.5 uh, kilometers per second of delta V and we have a little bit here that's 600 meters for 45 seconds so quick calculation basically we need to do 25 or 2.5 kilometers per second of acceleration now we have about 50 seconds there and we have 600 meters so that brings us down to uh, 1900 uh, meters per second of acceleration for 50 seconds now, this brings us to uh, the last 500 meters per second, but that total is going to take, what, 4 minutes and about 45? And we need a 500, which is one-seventh 
of this, which is almost a minute, actually above a minute. So that's about five minutes and a half of burn time. So if we split that equally across uh, periapsis, that's about two minutes and a half uh, burning before and after periapsis. So we're gonna try to be as precise as possible. And I know we're gonna probably start a little early as well because now I've enabled Autostrot for these tanks, these fuel tanks, the engine and everything to try to avoid some of the wobble but it's no guarantee so I'm gonna be real smooth on the uh, throttle controls and I'm gonna slow down every time the craft starts to wobble in case I need to because if we veer off course it's gonna complicate things a fair amount so we're coming up on the maneuver uh, let me actually... Uh, well, the autosave is actually close enough, so that's pretty good. We're going to time accelerate a little bit, and I think I'm going to start at 3 minutes before the node, and I'm going to work my way up the throttle slowly. Good. Still good, and I'm gonna watch that nav ball for any wobble. Although it looks pretty stable with auto strut, which is reassuring. Oh, on gimbal. Actually, I might want to turn the gimballing off, maybe? I don't know. Or turn on fine controls, let's say. To try to, to hold the attitude of the vehicle in the direction of the maneuver node as much as possible. There we go. With fine control and auto strut, we seem to be pretty safe. And there we go. Full throttle. And we're almost done with that cursed stage. Well, it's not cursed, I mean, it's extra fuel from the launch, probably from the... Oh, wow, okay. Alright, <laughs> that was funny. It didn't center us on the right vehicle, for some reason. Probably because of auto strut as well. Anyways. So, here we go, further doing the maneuver for some reason that's odd the counter reset itself I guess the maneuver was on the other vehicle and so it didn't keep track and that's gonna make things a little difficult maybe we'll see but we know that we're supposed to burn roughly 500 meters per second off that stage 5 so we should be done around that point really How's it looking? Still a minute to go. This is burning at the rate I believe we expected, which is good. Alright, so, so far so good. Just a little weird detachment uh, decoupling glitch, I suppose. Where we remain centered on a uncontrollable part. Looks like this is going well, as far as I can tell. Looks that way for sure. So I'm gonna physics warp to make this burn shorter, because I'm not gonna be able to find stuff to say for that long. Alright, so this looks pretty good. We are going to need to stage again very soon. I 
And it does look like it's gonna be in the right ballpark. So we are gonna ditch those and start burning again. And hopefully, well, it might cost more than 500 because we've done this maneuver over a fairly long period, so I expect some inefficiencies doing this maneuver. So we're gonna fix it right about there. We're gonna remove this maneuver and we're gonna make a new one and see what we're missing to get to Elu. So, a bunch prograde, I suppose that's a bit much, although it's the right ballpark. We know we're supposed to be going up as well, and by up, I mean north re uh, relative to Kerbin. Oh, that's a bit much. However, that is to be expected when you have long burns, 700 meters, that's still fine. Um, the real hard part here is actually getting the encounter, and I do want to get the encounter because I want to see the line around um, Ilu, so I can then adjust uh, with very high precision later on. So the important thing here is the separation. So whenever we do something to the maneuver, we want to make sure that it makes the separation go down. So see that's going up. That went that made it go down. That made it go down fairly significantly. Now we lost it a little bit. That's much further. Oops. And it's very sensitive at these distances. So we have to be careful. Okay. And we have to be somewhat... Oh, I'm still in physics warp. Okay, that... Alright, so... Stopping the physics warp should make things a little easier. Now you can also use your mouse scroll wheel on the uh, icons and... It's going to make smaller changes. That looks kind of good. Yeah, it's going down. Going down a lot, actually. Yeah, this looks like it's the way to go. Oops, that was a bit too much. Okay, so knowing this helps, let's actually go back, create a new maneuver so that we have a bit more time to adjust. Try to make it as efficient as possible. It's not too bad since we've over-engineered this and we even had 600 meters extra. But we want to make sure to save as much as possible. So maybe like this, let's see, what kind of separation are we looking at? Uh, a lot more than we really want. Also apparently scrolling down is better than scrolling up, it's finer controls. So see, we're already getting close to an encounter with half the fuel we were prepared to use earlier. Alright, so a million four hundred kilometers separation. Now we gotta make this go down. This helps. This helps tremendously. Okay, so we are getting really close. That was too much. Okay, too much as well. That's getting really good. Uh, 
Uh, it's really finicky. I wasn't kidding about that. That's having an effect. Is it a net positive effect? Well, yeah, sort of. Okay, so we're pretty close like that. That's even closer. Closer. And there we go. We have a new encounter. Alright, so. I want to point the vehicle in the right direction before the maneuver node. Now this one is a lot smaller. It's a lot shorter burn compared to the previous one, so it should be fairly accurate. So let's go ahead and time warp ahead a bit. There we go, getting close. Nice and close. Physics warping the vehicle in the right position because it turns really slow. That looks nice. Time warp a little bit more, and now we're going to have to do about 45 seconds before and after the node. Well, more like 40. So, 50 seconds. Let's try this. And let's physics warp, because we don't want to be watching this for very long. It's not the most entertaining thing. Here we go, gently. Can tone down the physics warp. Alright, last few meters per second. Now this is going to be very, very sensitive, so... Want to make sure you get this almost perfect. All right, we're 0.1 of a meter per second, and we are on a trajectory to encounter Ilu. So Jeb is now gonna pull out his. Uh, you know, shows and books and whatever, because he's got how long to go? Let's see, actually. Before he sees Ilu, two years and 229 days until the closest approach. So, Jebediah is gonna have some fun for a while, and then he's gonna be there for glory, and so are we. So, I'm gonna record maybe a little montage of the trip and then we'll see each other again so see you in another moment
and we're back again. So this is actually a considerable amount of time after we have reached Elu, simply because I've been tweaking the orbit. Um, I've made a really nice and circular orbit uh, around Elu, and I've actually tried to lower the inclination. We had a something like 12 degrees inclination at first, now it's down just under 2 degrees. So that should help. I've also gone ahead and collected a fair amount of science. Um, because it's kind of redundant to uh, watch over and over. Uh, just going out of the vehicle, grabbing the gravioli report and whatever, and bring it back in the capsule. So I've done a lot of that. Now we are getting ready for a landing. Um, we might go for more than one landings. Uh, there is so much fuel left that we could actually make like three trips three trips <laughs> um, back and up and down and up and down and up again because this lander uses just under 300 units of fuel and we almost have that in each tank here and we don't really need those tanks to uh, uh, come back to Kerbin. Uh, as you can see here we have almost 3000 meters per second uh, of worth of fuel just in the stage here and we're gonna have more if we burn the fuel from the lander um, basically because it's gonna be lighter so we're gonna activate the fuel tanks here and there and this small one and this one and we're gonna check that it's all of them. Sure looks that way. We can leave the uh, bay doors open. We can lower the landing gears, really doesn't matter. But yeah, the limiting factor is probably going to be monopropellant because I only planned for a single landing. And we need to dock back with this vehicle in order to refuel if we wanna go for multiple landings, probably. Um, well, most certainly, and so that might be the limiting factor, but we might be able to go at least for two landings, maybe one biome up each even, so that's a very high potential amount of science. So here we go, we're going to decouple and move ourselves away from the vehicle. That looks good, I guess, there we go point ourselves this way so we're not in the way of the vehicle when we maneuver to land. Now this is Jebediah's moment of glory here. It's time in the spotlight. Now we want to land on the bright side of the planet because otherwise that's going to be very boring. Also we need to stage the engines there we go and burn ourselves nice and suborbital and we're gonna try to go for a okay I guess I didn't move far enough away from the station okay quick jump back to the last quick save that was really unexpected okay we're gonna warp to just before the bright side do this whole dance again turn those on activate the fuel tanks which I turned off because of the lower engines which I didn't want to risk that they would burn this fuel there we go that looks good I think think and now we're gonna be quite liberal with our use of monopropellant to make sure we are well away from the vehicle that was really surprising really didn't expect to smash into that
All right, now I think we're moving fast enough and far enough away from that to not smash into it. Now we can stage the engines and look for a spot to land. We're gonna eyeball it. I really don't know where to land. Although after messing around a little bit, it seems that the brown patches are fairly uh, uneven whilst the midlands, the white part is pretty nice so I'll try to get to the edge of something one of those brown patches or a canyon or something and if it doesn't work out that's fine as long as the ground is not too crazy we should be plenty fine all right so moving away from the vehicle at tremendous speeds well, not necessarily tremendous. Now, we need to watch the suicide burn distance because this vehicle has a maximum of about 2.7 uh, thrust weight. But that's in comparison to ELU gravity, which is actually fairly low. So, we need to make sure we can brake in time. That's, that's kind of important. Because groundbreaking is not not the safest. So we're coming up on the bright side. And we're going to start bleeding off some horizontal speed. Because that's the safest thing to do. Now we want to watch the suicide burn distance very closely. Because as I said, we don't have very much power to slow ourselves down really quickly so we need to be careful about that we have enough plenty of thrust to weight to take off from ELU it's just not gonna be fast that's going down nicely gonna pay more attention to that I would prefer to land close to the canyon so if I can stop burning sideways that would be better but we're gonna prioritize not smashing into the ground so 7,000 we're gonna start burling a little early since we don't know how even the terrain is Oh, I'm a little worried because for some reason the suicide burn distance is still lowering. Hopefully those engines are strong enough. They really should be, but... I guess it's because of the terrain, but we're losing... The terrain is probably in a... in the slope, and as such, if it's rising, it looks like our braking speed is not going to be enough. We're still pretty high, though. We might manage. But it's going to be closer than I'd like. Well, I'm actually gonna go like this because I really want to lower our vertical speed as fast as possible. It's not ideal because this technically doesn't really help with um, the horizontal speed, but... Uh, there we go, suicide burn distance is increasing, so yeah, it, it was because of a slope. So maybe the terrain is rougher than I thought, even on the white areas. Oh, there's a canyon over there. Yeah, we might be able to biome hop over there for more science. So trying to lower our horizontal speed still. 
Although I'm going to prioritize not smacking into the ground, as I said. It seems to be really easy with those weak engines. Burning more fuel than I thought, but we were still good. I haven't burned half of it. And we're getting really close. The ground, which is good. It's a good sign. Alright, we can actually throttle down. We're still slowing down. Almost perfectly perpendicular to the ground. That's looking real good. Can actually afford to uh, let ourselves accelerate again a little bit. That's a bit wasteful in terms of fuel, but as I said, safety first. Trying to keep the horizontal velocity as low as possible. Last 300 meters. Really want to touch down with a speed lower than that though. I'm going to try to go, since we're using the micro struts, I think I really want to go like as smooth as possible when I touch down. I can actually hold retrograde. That's part of the reason why I brought the pilot, but that's really not helpful, it seems. I'm being a little impatient. Alright, that's a really good speed. And gently touching down. Good, very good. So we are indeed in a bit of a slope, but that's that's perfectly fine. What about the world first milestones? Yeah. Not the most amount the most impressive amount of money, but that's fine. And we have still over half the fuel, which is really good to take off. So we're gonna gather our one and only mystery goo. There we go. And we're gonna grab that the temperature the pressure even though there is no atmosphere <laughs> the instrument has frozen up that's really good um the seismic scan okay interesting and the gravity very little influence from other bodies yeah to be expected and now Jeb Whoa. <laughs> the vehicle is fairly light, so Jebediah's weight is actually fairly significant. And with the SAS turning off because there is no pilot, it's kind of wobbly. Everything should be fine, but <laughs> let's try to be careful not to tip the vehicle. So we're going to collect the goo, even though we're not going to be able to reuse it again. Collect that one. Can I reach this one? Yes. Very good. Store. I can take a surface sample from here, apparently. Did I take an AVA already? I don't know, but... Apparently not. And let's just let go and fall down gently. Well, congratulations, Jebediah. You are the first and probably only Kerbal ever in our career uh, campaign or whatever to reach Ilu. And congratulations to me because this is actually the first time I've landed on Ilu myself. So, yeah, I'm quite proud of this. 
pretty much on the first try. I've been messing a bit uh, around a little bit with the landings and with everything, but uh, Elu Midlands. Now let's say number one, and let's go with something goofy. I don't know. Finally, out of the capsule jab. So I'm gonna grab everything and I'm just gonna probably return to orbit and refuel this thing and go for another landing and then I'll catch you again. So fly Jeb back into his little cockpit. He's probably sick of it by now but if he wants to go back home he has to get there. Grab. And there we go. So I'll see you again in another minute. And just a quick update, so I've returned to the orbiter or whatever, the vehicle, uh, pretty much on fumes, I was practically empty, I've refueled the whole thing and I've taken it down um, from 50 kilometers orbit to a 40 kilometer orbit, just to make it a little bit easier on myself, the monopropellant is really... It barely used any, basically. So I think I'm gonna go for another landing here. And after that, we're gonna shoot back for Kerbin. So I'm gonna skip you the uh, details of this landing. Again, I might show you a quick clip on the ground where I managed to land. And that's gonna be it. After that, we're gonna return to Kerbin. So, see you! Alright, finally back for our return trip to Kerbin. So I decided against showing you the landing for multiple reasons, one of them being that I had a close encounter with the Kraken, who just wanted my rocket down on the ground for some reason, even though it landed on almost perfectly flat ground. It just wanted to slide and fall down. So that was it, and also um, I had to mess around a fair bit to manage to be precise enough to land myself in a canyon, because there are not very many biomes um, around Elu's um, equator, yeah, equator, and so that's it. So I've made one trip down, uh, I've burned most of my monopropylene trying to right the rocket, that was very frustrating, but I still managed a second landing. And now we are back and docked with the main vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and ditch this bit as soon as we have a maneuver node back for a Kerbin. And the reason for that is that we already have a launch window straight back to Kerbin, as you can see here, and we could even actually probably managed to insert into an orbit around Kerbin. We've got enough Delta V to do it and we could get even more in the upper stage because I haven't filled all the little tanks with liquid fuel. I didn't put the oxiders, the oxidizer in because it's a nuclear engine, it doesn't use oxidizers, so there's no point in that. Now to shoot for Kerbin this is going to be a little awkward, I guess. Uh, well, it shouldn't be that awkward. And we can even show ejection angle. Make that smaller. So yeah, eject retrograde makes sense. Uh, ejection, 8,386. We're nowhere near that. Well, we're so far away that Kerbin is not even rendering. It's making things a little hard. Okay, looks like we're gonna have to mess with the... Well, yeah, we're going to have to mess with normal and anti-normal, it would seem. 
Yeah, we will have to. So let's focus on Kerbin, because otherwise it's just not going to show, which would be annoying. Um, let's see here. Like this is making things worse. Okay. This looks better. I think that means we want... No. Oh. I saw it. It gave it to me. Um. Is that an encounter with... Oh, it is an encounter with Kerbin, but... Oh yeah, it's showing it around Kerbin because we're focused on it. So, Kerbin escaped in four years. Yeah, four years is roughly travel time we're expecting here. So, Jeb is gonna grab his snacks again. And... I guess watch some shows and read some books. Because he's got a while to come back. In fact, well, we've got a fair bit of science which is going to net us a fair bit of money and of course more science points but we might actually go for another mission while he's coming back that's definitely possible anyways we're going to execute the maneuver to bring him back it's in six minutes we're already pointed in the right direction really that's awfully convenient so let's speed things up a little bit. Now that's roughly a quarter of our Delta V. A little bit more, which is 10 minutes. Oh, hold on here. That could possibly not be accurate because we need to stage. Oh, how that scares me when... Okay, good. Oh, well that ripped the panels straight apart. That's not a problem, though, because we were going to ditch them anyway. So, yeah, we're going to trust that number. So that means that's roughly a quarter of that, a little over, so that's three minutes. So we'll go at maybe around two, just to account for inaccuracies and uh, inefficiencies as well. So there we go, maybe a little under two minutes. Yeah, there we go. And we're gonna physics warp. For some reason the maneuver seems to want to move, so I'm gonna use the stability assist since we have it. That's part of the reason we took Jebediah. So it looks like I was quite accurate. It was going to take four minutes. So we're a little short, but it'll be fine. Should be fine. <laughs> so, waving Elu goodbye. We're not about to see it again, since sending probes or a bigger mission might require signal, and that would be potentially quite annoying. Although we did unlock the newest, um, the latest, and the best um, antennae, I believe, so it wouldn't be quite as bad, but it's still pretty far to get signal to. And let's try to make this precise again. Boom. There we go, let's make sure things line up. They didn't quite line up perfectly. Uh, we'll reset our view here. Set up a new maneuver node and just try to correct things a little bit. Eight minutes, that's a little close. All right, let's focus back on Kerbin and go for another encounter. Well, yes, set as target, of course, but also focus view. So we're close-ish, but not quite as close as we'd like. 
Uh, seems that's not working out quite as well. Let's see. Nope. Okay, so we might be closer than I thought. Oops, we've gone over. Okay, what about radial? No. But that way looks like a yes. Very much so. Alright. So mostly a radial burn. A little bit of other things in there. It's really not much. Speeding time up. Making sure we've got that encounter. And actually I'm going to show you the maneuver node I'm going to set to tweak our encounter of Kerbin. I don't know if I want a straight atmospheric encounter since we do have the fuel to break. Okay, it looks good enough to me. So maybe around there Actually, we'll wait until we are out of... Will we have another encounter? No, we shouldn't. We'll wait until we eject... ...from Elu. So by Elu, it's going... ...very far, very fast. There we go. Okay, now the line is blue. It's gonna make it easier for me to figure it out. So maybe by the time we're there, we could tweak things. Let's focus view on Kerbin. And let's see where that takes us. So yeah, that would be pretty far from Kerbin, actually. And we're gonna fix that. Yeah, it's still pretty efficient. That gets us closer. Very nice. Much, much closer. Whoa. Okay, so it's still kind of far away. Which makes it super sensitive to any input. Oh, that takes us across the Mun. Not that we care, but we really don't need to come across the mun. Okay, so that's pretty close. Let's see if we can make it even closer. Radial isn't the best for this. That's a little too close. That's still a bit close. Well, at this point, I'm playing with fractions of fractions. So that might be a bit much. Alright, well. So in almost four years, we can make a correction burn, which is going to take us from millions of meters away from Kerbin to a mere few thousand. So... I'm gonna skip the wait. Um, I don't think I'm gonna run a mission in between. Actually, there's no point. Um, the other planets are much easier to access, with Jewel being the most complicated in terms of um, of launch windows, since it's also pretty far. But Elu is actually the the hardest to time because it's just so far, it's so far away. Although. Yeah, with Kerbin spinning relatively faster relative to it, it may not be that bad, but yeah. Anyways, so I'll see you when Jeb is ready to land. And I'm back. So is Jeb, actually. So is Jeb. Jebediah is back. Almost. 
Uh, we can see carbon really big. We can see that we've almost got no fuel left. But we're not going at a, an absolutely insane speed at which I was coming in at first. Um, so we did burn about 2.5, 2.6 uh, kilometers per second worth of fuel. And that's what it nets us with. So we are in an orbit inside the orbit of the Mun. And at Apoapsis, we are going to burn a retrograde to completely deorbit ourselves and hopefully return Jebediah all safe and sound, if not a little bit more insane, back to Kerbin's surface along with a ton, an absolute ton of science. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. Zoom. Here it comes. Almost there. Good enough. So we are going to burn ourselves around 30 kilometers, I guess. And then we're going to ditch just about everything. I might burn just a tiny bit more with the monopropellant just to uh, make sure we're safe from the uh, nuclear stage so let's go under 40 for the nukes and then we will actually decouple this undock and we're going to just push it a little further. And just that slight push brings us down pretty far into the atmosphere. So good enough, I think. I'm going to point prograde because that will put us closer to retrograde once we're down at periapsis. We're going to quick save just in case. And we're going to time warp again for the final time, or pretty much the final time in the last time, anyway, uh, for this mission. And almost entering the atmosphere here. We are going to decouple this, I think. Yeah. And face ourselves retrograde with the heat shield. So Jebediah is looking ecstatic. I would look ecstatic as well. He's been gone. Wow, mission estimated time. Six years, 340 days. That's... That's a long walk in the park. That's... Yeah, I, I would be insane. Alone in that tiny capsule... I don't think anyone is uh, in good mental health at that point, or any type of health, actually, especially in space with our current technology. Ugh. Months have uh, negative impacts on the body. Six years? That's something. All right, we have entered the atmosphere. We have re-entry effects, but that's fine. We have a fully shield. And we managed to slow down from uh, from Hilu. Uh, the speeds were absolutely tremendous. I mean, uh, we're talking like three or four kilometers per second above orbital speed, I believe. That's like six kilometers per second relative to Kerbin. That's, that's instant death speeds, basically. You, you, you just, there's no way to survive that. So I'm glad we packed the fuel. Although the rocket was pretty well engineered, if I do say so myself, I mean, might sound a little, you know, but yeah, that was perfect in terms of fuel. We could have made another landing if we wanted, so we, uh, we had enough of a margin, but we still didn't over-engineer it, I don't think. So coming down nicely into dawn I believe yep that's dawn 
but we're probably gonna line up dark. Too bad for video quality, I guess. That's gonna be dark, but hey, what can you do? So that's it. Very successful mission. We have 33 science reports, which are gonna be worth an absolute humongous amount of science and money because of our uh, policies, strategies. So that's gonna be good. Can't wait to see what that uh, what that yields. Coming down a little slow to my taste, so I'm gonna speed things up a little bit. Very nice. Gonna wait a bit for the drogue shoot. There, first set of parachutes over the grasslands. That should be nice. Speed things up again. And coming down nicely. So I'm not gonna mess around too long. This video has been uh, well over an hour now. So yeah, we're gonna call it very soon, but we're just gonna watch the end result here. Oh my, that's... I absolutely overdid it with the parachutes, but that's fine. We could practically land on the pair on the drogue chutes alone. So coming down slow, slow and steady. Popping the last parachute. Um, please deploy. <laughs> All right. I was scared for for a moment there. Don't want to sabotage the mission at the last moment because we're impatient. And touchdown! Recover the vessel, save Jebediah from himself, and gather all the science. With the results being, drum roll, loading. How much science did we get? How much money did we get from converting the science into money? Wow, that's almost 3,000 points of science, which we of course reduced and split in half. Jebediah isn't even <laughs> max level, but he's level 4 now, he's uh, our most experienced Kerbonaut. And the money is almost 150,000 bits, monies, whatevers. And that pretty much puts us above our starting amount, even though our rocket cost us uh, something like 250,000. So this mission paid for itself even without contracts. So I would call that a really resounding success. So if you liked, if you've enjoyed, if you found that helpful, please like, comment and subscribe. So thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.